Hey guys, and welcome back to another Technology Guru video. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Google Calendar. So I've gotten a lot of questions from people asking me to do a full tutorial on the basics and the quick, basically a quick start guide for Google Calendar. So I'm going to do that now. So as you see here, this is the main interface of Google Calendar. And if you're wanting to know, obviously, how to navigate over to your calendar, uh, if you're within your Gmail account, click the little icon in the upper right hand side here, make sure you're you're logged into your account then these little dots here go ahead and click those and then right here you're going to see one that says calendar just like that there and then you're going to have the calendar open up to you so let's first take a look at the different viewpoints that you can view your calendar so you have the week view which is this one here you have the day view which is going to show you an individual day then you have the month view which is going to allow you to see everything that's going on in this specific current month and you can change the month by using these little arrow keys in the upper left hand side of the screen then you have the four days view which I've never used I'm not sure why you would I guess it's a little more zoomed in and you can see kind of what's coming up that gives you the next four days and then you have last but not least the agenda view so under agenda basically it's a line item of everything that you have in your calendar uh, basically uh, for the upcoming foreseeable future so we are going to stick to the week view right now primarily for this tutorial but again just know that if you want to you can view your calendar a bunch of different ways so obviously the first thing you're going to want to know how to do is how do I add an event to my calendar so it's pretty easy so let's go ahead and go to next week as you can see here a holiday is coming up so now we're going to add a new event on Monday May 29th at 10 a.m. so in order to do that it's as easy as double clicking right here at the line where you see 10 a.m. and then go ahead and give your event a name so go ahead and say meeting with Bob or whoever you're having a meeting with and then what you're going to see is a bunch of different options now right here you're going to see the date the time the meeting starts and then the time the meeting ends. If you want this event to be all day, you can click all day. Now, if it's somebody's birthday, that may be an instance where you want it to be all day. Uh, so we're gonna uncheck that now. If you want the event to repeat every single Monday, so have it repeat every Monday, click the repeat button here, and this is where you get into the repeating aspect of the calendar that's very useful. So if you know you're going to have a meeting every Monday for the foreseeable future, you want this to repeat every week, so it's going to be weekly. You want it to repeat every week so every one week and then you want it to repeat on Mondays so again you can change this to be monthly if you have a monthly meeting on the first Monday of the week then you can change the day to be any day of the week and then you can change it to end never which you know again if you know you're going to have the meeting for the foreseeable future you're going to have it end never uh, or if you know it's going to end after this calendar year you can hit after so many occurrences or on a specific date so we're going to go ahead and leave the end date to never because we really don't know when this meeting is going to come to an end and then we go ahead and click done then what you're going to see in bold here it's going to show you that this event's going to repeat every week on Monday and if you ever have to go back and edit that repeat section just click the edit button right here and then you're going to see this dialog box pop right back up now if you know that your meeting is with Bob but you know Bob really doesn't do well with showing up on time you may want to send Bob a request so in order for us to send a request to someone what you're going to see over here is the guest list now underneath this list here you're going to see something that says add guest go ahead and click that box there and then type in Bob's email address whatever Bob's email address may be and then what you're going to do when you save this event it's going to automatically ask you do you want me to send an invite to the specific guest that you've added to the event and then you hit yes and you're good to go now the other event details are going to be where so you're going to type in the location of the meeting here then you're going to be able to say if this is going to be a video call you can actually click that link there and that will let the guest know yes we're going to be on video then you're going to have what calendar you want it to show up on now I only have one calendar for the purposes of this tutorial but I will show you shortly how you can add multiple calendars and organize the different calendars all from within Google Calendar. Then you're going to have a description. So obviously the description of this one is a meeting with Bob. So put your description there. And then if you're like me and you're a visual person, you may want to color code that specific meeting. So if you do want to color code that specific meeting, we will make that meeting a nice lavender color. And then you can tell whether or not you want a notification and how 
early do you want that notification? So if I wanna be notified 30 minutes before this meeting, I can click this here and then say 30 minutes and it's going to pop up on my mobile device or on my computer if I'm in front of my desktop or if you know you're going to be in your email a lot, you can go ahead and click the email option and it will email you 30 minutes before the meeting and let you know, hey, you have a meeting with Bob, make sure you're ready to go. Uh, again, you can add a notification if you want to, but we're not going to. Um, basically, you can choose here, show me as available or busy. So during this time slot, you're definitely going to be busy. But if you're still taking calls or whatnot, you can click available there. And then visibility, if you want this to be a public calendar event, you click this here where people can go click your calendar link and view your calendar. Very, very important for people who are managing other employees or other people. You may want them to be able to have access to your calendars during the week to know, hey, they're going to be busy during this time slot. So I'm going to leave mine at calendar default. Once we're done with all of this, we click the red save button up there. It's then going to ask me, are you sure you want to send the invitations to Bob and say, yes, of course I do. And that's going to send an invitation to Bob's email address for him to accept or decline and depending on whether or not he can attend the meeting. Now, once we've done all that, you're going to see this little guy come up here underneath the date that we just set. So Monday, May 29th, 2017, you're going to see this nice color-coded calendar event meeting with Bob. Now, the beauty of Google Calendar is that if this meeting gets moved, you can actually click and hold an event and drag it to say, oh, we're moving the meeting from Monday to Wednesday, so we can click and hold and drag this anywhere on our calendar. So we're going to leave it from 10 to 11, but we're going to move it to Wednesday. So go ahead and drag that guy over to Wednesday. It's then going to ask you, do you want to send updates to the guest and let them know of the changes? So of course, you're going to want to send Bob an update to say, hey, we are changing this to be Wednesday as opposed to Monday. So click send, and that's going to alert Bob and let him know when that meeting is going to be changed to. And so now we know how to create a new event and we also know how to move that event around. Another way of creating an event as opposed to double clicking on the calendar here is you can click the big red create button in the upper left hand corner of the screen and that's going to take you to the same panel. And again, we're not going to do it here because you already know how to do that. Now, the next thing I wanna show you is all about calendars, right? So this calendar here is going to be my main calendar that you're seeing here. But if we go to my calendars on the left hand side of the screen and then hit the drop down menu here, you're going to see a bunch of different calendars. You're going to see mine, you're going to see the birthdays, you're going to see reminders calendar. If I want to create a new calendar for a work calendar, I can click the down arrow here and then go to create new calendar. This is going to be where you create the new calendars and you may want to create one again, like I said earlier, that is public for you to share the link so people can actually see your schedule and know, hey, this person's busy during this specific time. So we'll go ahead and say uh, that this one's going to be the work calendar. Put your description here, whatever you want your description to be. Location, if you have one, if you want to do that. Uh, you probably want to be pretty precise with your calendar time zone and location. Uh, again, this helps for people when they're going and they're, they're going to be joining events with you. And then this here is what I was telling you about. If we click this box here, it's going to make this calendar public. So basically the calendar will appear in public Google search results. So if we go to learn more, if you choose public, all your calendar information will be available to anyone, including your event details. So be very careful with that. But if you make your calendar public and select share only my free and busy information, that's only going to let people know when you are free. Now, again, you don't have to make this necessarily public to everyone in order for people to see your calendar. What you can do is you can uncheck this box and actually type in an individual email address. So if we only want Bob to be the person that sees my calendar, uh, you know, you can go in here and add that person. So you can check this down uh, drop down menu here and say, hey, I want them to see all of my events. I want them to be able to even make changes and manage the sharing abilities. So if you have like two managers, you may want that person to be able to manage as well. But we're going to let Bob see all of my event details and then we'll click add person. Now you're going to see here, you're going to see my email address and then you're going to see Bob as well. And Bob's going to be able to see and, and all of that good stuff. Bob's going to get notified as well well. Uh, so once you're done with this, click the button here that says create calendar. Now you're going to see that new work calendar on the left hand side of my screen over here. And it's going to be labeled and, and dialogued as a red 
color here. If we want to, we can click the down, down arrow and change that color to an orange or whatever color we want that specific calendar to be. Now, when we go and we add a new event, so if I'm adding an event for next Thursday, you're going to see right here under calendar, I'm going to have the drop down box. It's now going to give me the option to select my work calendar. And that's going to be for every future event that you create from this point forward. Now you may see something over here that also says other calendars. Um, basically you can see this here where it says add friends calendar. They can share the link with you or the name of their calendar. It's a specific uh, dot file extension for Google calendars. And you can paste that here. Also, if you go to Google and search for like public Google calendars, it will then take you to a list of those that you can add. So if you want to have like the holidays, like here, I have one that is holidays in the United States. So that means anytime there is a public holiday in the U S I'm actually going to see like here, you're, you're seeing Memorial day. Uh, that's just a basic one that is kind of in line with, with my life and what I'm doing. But for you, you may want to add other calendars and you can do that here under other calendars. So that's going to be the main basics of adding events, managing calendars and whatnot. But now let's get into the nitty gritty details of what do I want to do if I want to change settings and things like that. So right here, you're going to see a cog wheel underneath the settings tab, click on settings and then go to settings like right here. You're going to see the general settings come up available to you. But if we go to calendars here, you're going to see the settings for all of your calendars. So as you see here, here's all of my different calendars. Here's the settings that I have set for them. And you can go here, edit notifications for specific calendars, do all of that. And again, if you want to, all of that is under calendars underneath general, you're going to see basically the overarching settings for your calendar as a whole, the language is English, your country, your time zone, all of that good stuff's going to be underneath the calendar settings. And again, all of that is under the cog wheel. So now I'm going to navigate back over to my Google calendar and just give you a summary of everything. So remember, if you want to change the view, go up to the upper right hand corner and change the view to a monthly view, a four day view, whatever you want to do there. You can also add events from within any viewpoint. So if I'm viewing a, you know, my calendar from the month view, I can actually go ahead and click on a specific day. And this little quick box comes up to me here and I can add an event. Also, I can add reminders by clicking on the reminder, basically like a to-do list. Remind me this needs to be done all day on this specific day and then say task can go here and then click the blue create button just like that. Um, so basically guys, that's going to be it for Google calendar, your quick start guide. Um, if you want to and have any questions on anything within Google calendar, put that in the comment section below. I would love to help you out. As always, don't forget to like, share this video with your friends and or family. And guys, until next time, I will talk to you later.